Greetings and welcome everybody to another episode of the Ted In Your Head podcast. I'm Ted Moreno, certified hypnotherapist and high performance coach. This podcast is all about achieving greater health, happiness, and success by transforming your mind and your life. One of the things I love to do on this podcast is talking to experts in health, healing, and personal transformation. So today, my special guest is Paul Hermelin. Hi, Paul. How are you today? I'm doing great, Ted. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. So I know you're a busy guy, and I very much appreciate you being here today and taking the time to, to be my guest on my podcast. So let's go ahead and uh, check out your bio. Mm -hmm. So Paul J. Hermelin is a certified emotional freedom techniques practitioner based out of Sierra Madre, California, and is accredited through EFT International. Paul teaches people how to manage their stress by tapping on select acupoints located on the hands, face, and upper body. Paul also works with clients who want to reduce the intensity of strong negative emotions or troubling thoughts related to unpleasant memories or difficult moments from their past. He helps his clients experience a positive shift in their perception of themselves and others and gain a healthier outlook. Paul works with clients across the state of California through video chat, such as Zoom, and also sees clients in person at his Sierra Madre office. So again, thanks so much for being here today. Appreciate your time. I used to live in Sierra Madre. Oh, did you? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. nice uh, nice little town. Gets awful, got awful hot in the summertime though. Yes, yes, for sure. Yeah, especially this summer. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet, I'll bet. Yeah. All right, well, let's get right into it. You know, sure. EFT is a very interesting subject and I do teach my clients EFT, but I definitely have nowhere near the experience or certification that you have. And uh, I think there's a huge interest in EFT. All you have to do is go onto YouTube and type in tapping or EFT, and there's probably hundreds of videos about that. But there's one thing that I want to ask you about, and that is that EFT is not EMDR, right? Correct. Eye movement desensitization and reprocessing is a completely different method. Method, yeah. And you have to see an EMDR specialist. You cannot self-apply EMDR because it is so intricate. Yeah. Got it. But you can self-apply EFT. Yes, correct. You can. Okay. So let's start from the beginning, Paul. What is EFT? Uh, well, EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. And it is, again, it is a self-applied method that you can use to help regulate your nervous system to lower your cortisol level and your adrenaline levels. When you're feeling overwhelmed by uh, certain emotions, strong negative emotions, whether you're angry, you're frustrated, or even scared. And by tapping on specific acupoints, which are actually close to the surface of the skin versus acu uh, using needles yes. that have to penetrate, these are actually acupoints that are close to the surface of the skin that are known to help regulate the nervous system. So you tap or massage gently on these points and they send impulses, electrical impulses through the nervous system to the area of the brain that regulates our body's stress response, which is actually the amygdala. The amygdala is almost like our radar detector for threats. It's always on the lookout for threats, whether they're perceived threats or even threatening thoughts or actual threats, things that we see are coming at us. So when, when you use or apply EFT, these impulses are telling the amygdala and the body that you're safe. You don't have to be in that fight, flight, stress response. You can actually come back to what we call parasympathetic nervous state, which is our rest and digest state. And we've just become more calm, more focused, and more relaxed. Okay, and so this you can apply it to a, mer a myriad of different issues that come up in life. Yeah. Okay, so what you're basically saying is that EFT involves tapping on certain spots on the body that kind of correspond to acupuncture spots. But you're, unlike acupuncture, where you're putting a needle in, you're tapping yes. on these spots, and tapping on these spots sends some electrical impulses to the brain, to the amygdala, that kind of resets the parasympathetic parasympathetic nervous system brings down stress brings out fight flight and i imagine that this can happen fairly quickly when one is self-applying eft or getting eft from a practitioner correct correct yeah and one of the key things that you mentioned earlier the videos that people can find on youtube 
the ones that are on YouTube are okay, but they tend to be too general and too broad. Mm -hmm. And when you apply EFT, it's really key that you are specific about what the issue is that is bothering you and causing you distress. So you can't, you can start by saying, I'm feeling really stressed out, but that's not really hitting the fine point of why you're feeling stressed out. So it's really key to be specific. I'm really stressed out because I have a job interview tomorrow at 2 p.m. Mm. And I really can't afford to mess it up. It's much more specific. And okay. when you apply EFT, it really helps to be specific. Okay. So uh, briefly, you know, rather yeah. than going through the whole EFT process, can you briefly describe kind of what, what you would do in EFT? Sure. Sure. Okay. So let's say, for example, I did have a job interview tomorrow yeah. and just thinking about it at the moment, right now in the present moment, I'm feeling scared or I'm feeling nervous. I'm feeling anxious. It's whatever word you want to use to describe the sensation you're feeling. And you want to maybe try even to identify anywhere in the body. You may feel that specific emotion. A lot of people feel it in their stomach or in their chest. And then you would rate, rate it like on a scale from zero to 10. How intense is this, this feeling of fear or worry? Is it like a medium, high or low? You can even give it a number like is it a five, a six or a seven? And that just provides a benchmark so you know where you're starting from. Okay. And then what you do is create what's called a setup statement. And the setup statement starts with even though. And what you do is you basically state and give it a phrase of what it is that's bothering you, how you feel about it, and end it with a positive statement or an acknowledgement. And here's an example for the uh, having the job interview tomorrow. And I would start tapping on the side of my hand, and it could be either hand, mm -hmm. which is an acupressure point. And you essentially say, even though I'm feeling worried about this job interview tomorrow that I have, and I feel this in my stomach, I acknowledge that that's how I'm feeling right now. Or I deeply and completely accept myself. There's actually a variety of ways to end the setup statement. It just depends on what resonates with the person who's using it. Okay, okay. So let time. me interrupt you for just a second. So oh, what yeah. you do is Go you're ahead. accepting, you're accepting like, this is what's going on with me right now. This is Correct. what's happening, not, not fighting it, not denying it, not repressing it. Okay. You're providing right. validation of how you're feeling. Okay, thanks. Please continue. And that's fine. So after you repeat the setup statement three times, you then go through the various tapping points and use what are known as reminder phrases. Mm -hmm. And it's, it essentially just keeps you on track of what it is you're focusing on. So for example, I finish the setup statement and then I would go to the top of the head and just gently tap and say to myself out loud, this fear in my chest. Mm -hmm. And then I would go to the next set of uh, acupoints, which is right here on the inside of the eyebrow and repeat the set of the, the reminder phrase, mm -hmm. this fear or worry in my chest. Mm -hmm. And then these other acupoints, I just continue to repeat this mm -hmm. fear in my chest, this 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 fear in my chest. Then I would pause. And that is actually one round of mm -hmm. EFT. That's self-applied. Mm -hmm. And I would just kind of pause and check in with myself and try to find out if the intensity of the fear has changed, if the energy has changed. If it started off at a six, is it now maybe a five? Maybe did it drop to a four? Mm. And if it did, then you know you're on track. Okay. And then you would just repeat another round. And you can even include any particular thoughts that may have come up in the process. Like, yeah, I really can't mess up this job interview tomorrow because I've been on three in the past month and I haven't gotten a job. And so you can incorporate any additional thoughts, which again, uh, you can include to make it more specific. Okay. And then you can just repeat the whole process all over again and then check your, your intensity level. And well, it that sounds, continue to drop. That sounds pretty simple. Yeah, it's very simple. And again, that's basic EFT. That is not what I would call clinical EFT. That's basic EFT. Okay. So what's the difference between like basic EFT and clinical EFT? Okay. So when you're doing clinical EFT, you are generally working with a practitioner such as myself. And it's called clinical because it, there's more to it than just the basic recipe. 
that I demonstrated for you. There's a myriad of different techniques that we use, especially if we're working with someone who has trauma, who has trauma from childhood. We use gentler techniques mm -hmm. where we just don't dive right in to a trauma that someone may have experienced. We use a gentle approach. We sort of sneak up on whatever the trauma might be in a very gentle, gradual way because we're trying to keep the client safe and not re-trigger them or re-traumatize them. So we just have more gentler approach to tiptoeing towards the trauma until the client feels that they're ready to actually discuss it and talk about it and then eventually tap on it. Okay, so people can learn EFT and self-apply when they're feeling stressed or nervous or they have a job interview. And you, right. I'm assuming you teach EFT as well. I do. I teach it once a month, actually. I actually teach quite a few uh workshops through meetup.com that people can go through uh, and if they're all free and I teach uh, different uh, on different subjects whether it's looking for work I actually have one specifically about looking for work wow. and all, all the things that are stressful uh -huh. like putting out all the different applications waiting for a response getting rejection letters or emails mm -hmm. and feeling just discouraged and just having to deal with all of that so yeah it's been a really interesting program for people to join Sounds uh, like it. One on trauma as well. One on childhood trauma as well. And then you also uh, uh, see people like in a clinical type setting where you're actually working with people that are coming to you and saying, you know, I have, you know, these difficult uh, memories or negative emotions or intense, strong, uh, exactly. you know, bad memories. You work with that, those exactly. kind of things too. Okay, I great. Do. So um, I'm curious, how was EFT discovered? Who invented it? Where did it come from? Well, it actually is a simplified version of what's known as thought field therapy, which was developed by Dr. Roger Callahan in the 1980s, the early 1980s. Um, but Gary Craig is, was a student of his. And Gary Craig is actually the developer of EFT as we know it today. He mm -hmm. simplified the approach. There are actually many different acupoints that thought field therapy uh, manipulated. But uh, Gary Craig found a way to simplify the process. And again, it uses elements of uh, acupressure because you're manipulating acupoints mm -hmm. and then CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy and exposure therapy. Because again, when you're dealing with memories, you are kind of exposing the client to that memory, to sort of taking and opening the file cabinet, pulling that memory out of back of long-term storage and bringing it to the forefront. And then you're exposing them to that memory, but in a gentle way, mm. so that they can sort of examine it in a different light by regulating mm. at the same time, regulating the nervous system so they don't feel like they're suddenly in that same moment that they were when they were six or 10 or 12. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people that don't want to think about those memories or they, you know, they feel that they'll lose control or they'll go into some downward spiral, you know, so those right. things stay repressed. But you're saying that EFT enables somebody to uh, to expose themselves to those memories in a safe, gentle way that's not going to re-traumatize them. Correct. And which is, again, why it's so important to work with a practitioner and use clinical EFT, which, again, applies gentler techniques versus just diving right in. Yeah. When I was five years old, my, my dad punched me or my, my mom slapped me. And, you know, that can be very traumatizing just yeah. trying to remember that. And then you, it's hard to sit there and tap when I was five years old, my mother slapped me. You don't want to do that. You want to, you want to do it in a much more gentler way. And that's why working with a facilitator helps so much too. Awesome. Wow. That, that, uh, so, I mean, I have a basic understanding of EFT, but you're kind of doing a little bit of a deep dive. I'm learning a lot just from listening yeah. to you. So yeah. how did you learn EFT? Well, I was actually a client. I started seeing a practitioner myself for early traumatic issues that I was trying to heal myself from. And this was back in 2015. And after a few years, I just found it to be so healing. I just found it to be so powerful and so effective. And I had been in and out of therapy earlier in my life because I did have some traumatic issues from childhood. Mm -hmm. So when I found up, found EFT to be so effective, I just decided, you know, I want to teach, I want to learn how to do this so that I can work with other people who maybe feel like they've been in therapy for a number of years and feel like they keep hitting the wall, yeah. just talking about their issues all the time, but never really healing the trauma 
which is mainly a big part of reasons why people have issues is traumas that they never really addressed in a in a way that could help them heal. Yeah, and that's a so that's how I got, was exposed to EFT, and that's how I eventually signed up through a certification program. It took me a year to complete. I had to do fifty hours of uh, session hours working with individuals, and I was uh, supervised. I had a mentor. I had to take trauma training courses. I had to take ethics and standards courses. Wow. I, I had to go through a, a program. I had to learn about all the different techniques that are applied, the gentle ones, the, the ones that when you're working with trauma. So there's a whole program that you have to learn. It's not just you take a weekend course and you're suddenly certified. It takes it takes time and it takes a lot of effort. It sounds yeah. very similar to the program I went through at the Hypnosis Motivation Institute, which was a year program and we took ethics and all of that and obviously if you're going to work with people and and you know uh, charge money for your your helping them then you know you ought to know what you're doing and be you know uh, qualified and it sounds like you you definitely are so um how do you use EFT to help your clients or what are some of the areas that you that you work with um uh, to help people with well Again, it just depends. You know, a lot of people come to me with problems that are happening in the present moment. Like maybe something's happening at work. Maybe their their boss is causing them some issues. Maybe they're just really frustrated with coworker or something like that. Or relationships. I mean, that's a big one. You know, people come in and they say, "Yeah, I'm dealing with this problem with my wife or my my husband or my boyfriend, my girlfriend," mm -hmm. and. Eventually, I'll say, well, how does that show up for you in your life today? Mm -hmm. And again, my, my, my goal is to get something specific that we can focus that we can focus on and then eventually tap on. And then maybe they'll say, well, when it comes to like my husband, the other day I said, hey, don't forget to go to the store and pick up some milk and some bread while, before you head home. And then he showed up and he didn't do it. He totally spaced. He totally forgot. And it just really pisses me off. I have to constantly keep telling my husband to, you know, to remind him. And he just keeps forgetting. And it makes me feel like he doesn't care. So, okay, all right, there we go. There's a specific event. So I will ask the client, how do you feel about just thinking about that right now? How does that make you feel? And it has to be how the person feels in the present moment, not how they felt at the time. Because EFT is only uh, effective on how the client is feeling right now. So how does the client feel right now? Well, I'm feeling kind of angry about it. Okay, mm -hmm. well, how, what's the intensity of the anger? Oh, it's like an eight. Yeah, I'm pretty pissed. Okay, very good. Where do you feel that in your body? Do you happen to feel this anger anywhere in the body? Yeah, I feel it in my throat. I feel like a tightness in yeah. my throat. I'll say, perfect, perfect. Let's go ahead and create a setup statement. And even though I'm feeling this anger, man, I'm so pissed and I'm feeling it in my throat mm -hmm. because my husband, again, didn't listen to me. And he came home before without buying the milk and the bread I asked him to buy the other day. Mm -hmm. And I accept that that's how I'm feeling right now. Yeah. And that's essentially how I work with people is I help to fine tune what the issue is. And then we zero right in and we start tapping on it. It's not therapy where you just come in, sit down and talk for an hour. Right. We get right to it. We just get right to it. And, as long, and uh, unless, it's not, unless it's trauma, then we are much more gentle. We take our sure. time. With that. Wow. And it sounds a, a large part of the work is helping people to connect with what they're feeling in their body. So that somatic piece of it. Exactly. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And that's just so important, you know, I mean, to connect with the body and feel what's going on in the body and that's one of the things i realized in my work how important it is to help people identify what they're feeling in their body in the moment you mm -hmm. know and then addressing that so that's very interesting so um where can people go to learn more about eft like if they want to look it up or get some more information let's say before they contact you uh, where, where, where are some good resources to go well, there are a lot of great resources. One that I would recommend right off the bat is EFT International, mm -hmm. which is the governing body. They're the ones that set the standards of making sure that all practitioners abide by certain standards, that they receive the proper education, and that they provide the correct amount you know, of professional work with clients. So if they just go to EFT International, they'll be able to get the information EFT is. They can also go to the Tapping Solution. These are different websites that they can check out. And then if they want to find out more about me, 
My business is EFT for Authentic Living. And they just can go to that website and I have information about what EFT is as well. And I have a YouTube channel. They can go to EFT uh, for Authentic Living and check out videos there or even on my Instagram account. I have a lot of videos out there about EFT, how you can apply it for different things. Yeah. Well, I'll Lots put of all of that um, for, for the listeners. I'll put all of that in the show notes that I have on my on my website. So every time we have a podcast, uh, it goes on a blog on my website and we'll have all of that information available for you. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, they can go to eftforauthenticliving.com and they can shoot you an email and say, hey, I want to work with you. And, and I understand you offer a free 20-minute uh, uh, phone consultation or Zoom consultation. Right. Correct. I do. Yeah. And also I wanted to mention, because I just realized I didn't mention it earlier, I do have these monthly meetup events. And one of them is teaching basic EFT. So a person can actually learn how to do EFT with me once a month. I do it usually the second Sunday of every month. Second so Sunday of every month. If they actually want to learn it, they don't have to, they don't have to watch a YouTube video. They can work with me live and they'll actually experience benefits right there and then. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the Instagram uh, is under your name or? Uh... It's under EFT for Authentic Living as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's, uh, that's Instagram. I'll put all of that in the show notes. Okay. All right. Cool. So um, let's see, what other questions do I have? So if somebody wanted to contact you, let's say they heard the podcast uh, and they're like, oh my God, that sounds like something I can do. I mean, how soon can you get them in to start working with them? And you can see them in person if they're local because you're in Sierra Madre, right? Which is right next door. Sandwich right, between... sitting right there in that comfortable chair right there. Okay. All right. And, and, and Sierra Madre <laughs> is right next door to Pasadena for people that may That's not right. know. That's right. right. That's okay. correct. Yeah. How soon can you get somebody in to start working with them? Fairly soon, like within a week or two, I can usually get them in. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Wow. That's, that's some really, really good information because, uh, oh, and I, here's a question I had for you. So sure. what's the difference between tapping and EFT? Is there a difference or is it kind of the same thing? It, it essentially, it's tapping. It's just more known as tapping because you are literally tapping on these acupoints on the body. So people refer to it as tapping versus EFT or emotional freedom techniques. And EFT, as you know, that could be thought of as an electronic funds transfer, <laughs> or they could mix the words or letters around. Is it, is it an ETF, like a fine, you know, like a stock? <laughs> <laughs> like so a fungible asset? <laughs> So tapping just tends to be the easier way to refer to it, but it essentially is the same. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, that's a lot of really excellent information. Um, and, and there was a lot of things you talked about that I didn't really know about. So I sure do appreciate you coming on my podcast. And for our listeners out there, uh, again, you can go to tedmoreno.com slash blog. You can find out, uh, you can actually click on Paul's uh, website, his Instagram link. And uh, if you want to get in touch with Paul, you know how to do that. If you want to get in touch with me, tedmoreno.com slash contact. I also offer a complimentary uh, phone consultation if you're interested in hypnotherapy. And I find that both, that EFT is an excellent, uh, 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 what's the word, um, to hypnotherapy. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking out Compliment. on the word. Compliment. Compliment, yes. And, and of course, hypnotherapy is an excellent compliment to EFT. So. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I know... I wanted to mention one final thing is that uh, I, I neglected to mention before that if you want, there are also ways you can apply EFT to help clear away phobias, as well as food cravings for certain things. Like if you have a fear of a speaking or a fear of flying, it also is effective at you, uh, as well if you want to try EFT for that. Just mm -hmm. like I was thinking, it was your hypnotherapy that made me realize, oh my God, it can also help in that area as well. Yeah. yeah, you would be a really great resource for those clients I have where I'm working on fears and phobias and, you know, uh, we're just not really getting anywhere. And that would be an awesome opportunity to refer people to you. So thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're a busy guy. I appreciate taking the time on a Friday to, to meet with me. So uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, my big thanks to my special guest, Paul Hermelin. Paul, take good care of yourself and uh, we'll talk soon. It was a real pleasure. Thanks so much for having me, Ted. Thanks for coming on. Bye-bye now.